Welcome to the very special Austin John Plays birthday special episode of Animal Crossing. It's it's actually my real life birthday today, April 6th. And this is Animal Crossing 19. If you want to give me a present, the biggest present you could give me is just looking and seeing if you're subscribed. Just just look at the button. That's it. Just look at it. Some people think that they're subscribed and then next thing you know, you look at the button and you're not subscribed because of how much you see me. And if this video is recommended to you anyways, why not subscribe? It's going to change literally nothing on how much my videos are recommended to you and it would be the best birthday present you could give me. Welcome back everyone to... Nice. Welcome back everyone to Animal Crossing 19 with me, Austin John of Austin John Plays. I just want to say this now to everyone who has been supporting a member to the channel. You guys are amazing and thank you. And you guys are allowed to send me mail. However, I don't want stuff like this. This golden shovel is from the same person who sent me 30 gold yesterday. And to be honest, I'm, I'm personally not comfortable having things like this. So I'm going to go and put them in the bin. 30 gold nuggets is something that like takes a long time to work toward and I don't want to just be handed that. If it's a fun arcade cabinet for the basement, cool because you know it's gonna sit there and it's gonna look pretty but it's not and it's not something that's gonna like you know help me progress in the game and I want to play as vanilla as possible if that makes sense. Anyways I visited Zoe and she gave me the very few amount of basic flowers that I've been missing and anything that I'm gonna be crossbreeding a lot of I feel like I'm gonna have to start moving it out of here because it's getting very limited on what can actually crossbreed. Like I want this to be like where I display everything that has already crossbred and those are just sort of being thrown all over the place. So I and like I now have, you know, all these all these different cosmos and I have no room for them. I've outgrown this area already. So that is going to be one of the first things that I want to achieve is. But that's going to be stuff for tomorrow because you know what tonight is time for night stuff. And it's time for voiceover, Austin. And my first island in the night is a basic river island. And there's an elephant there with like a yellow and red hair piece. It's kind of weird and kind of looks like a flower. And it's a sad reminder of Walt's sacrifice for us to have a better island and a better island villager. And I'm not going to waste Walt's sacrifice on this elephant. Actually, I found a natural tarantula spawn here, which was pretty neat. And then right after that, one found me. When I was here, I shook a tree and it had another arcade seat, except this one is red, so I'm very excited for it. Island number two, and I got the rare fish island for sturgeon. Fantastic. I am very poor. All of my money is in the stock market right now. And is that... That is the same elephant. I got the same elephant twice in a row. I don't want this elephant. What is this elephant doing here? I said we were saving this for a good villager, not an elephant. Now I'm kind of ashamed to say that I spent a good 10-15 minutes getting this island ready for sturgeon farming. Clearing everything out, making sure I had nice smooth paths to walk around. Then I ran around despawning things for about 5-7 minutes, only to remember that we don't have river mouth spawns this month. There is no sturgeon. The most valuable thing in this river is a golden trout. And the golden trout is the same size as eggs, so... This island is completely useless this month, so I just left. I did shake a tree and get a velvet stool though, so I have that going for me, which is nice. And you ready for a game changer? An absolute game changer? I just learned that if you have one transparent pixel on a custom texture, you can overlay that custom design on top of a path and it retains its texture. And I'm very excited for this. But on to island three for the night and we got Spiral Lake Island. And it's weird, I don't see a villager here. I see a campfire. There should be a villager. There is no visible villager here. Then I went back to my town and remembered that it was Bo's birthday. And it would be very rude of me to not go and wish Bo a happy birthday. And he has a pimpin' birthday outfit. Look at that. Oh, and he's my birthday twin. He's the fifth on the sixth. Nice. And I gave him a wasp, and apparently he loves it. Bo is so into nature. I should have given him a flower. And to be honest with you, I was kind of losing inspiration of what I wanted to do with my island. I, I have a general idea, but I don't know, like, specifics, and I don't know if there's, like, a subreddit of people who are doing, like, specific designs and stuff, and I don't know, it just seemed... Uh, but then 
I was hanging out with Zoe on her stream last night and she visited an island and the micro environments were so phenomenal. Everything told its own story in such a small area. And you know what? That that lit the fire under my bum. Let's just say that. And I have a clear vision on what I want to do with some things. I even got to visit it myself. I was there for about seven minutes and just so many things. Once I saw it, it made sense. It clicked in my head. And I have some new inspiration to bring back to my island to mix with my already established vision on what I want for it. So here's the thing. Right now, my island feels like a deserted island that people then made a small village on, like a tribal village. It's a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Wow, we learned how to make a pathway, and it's pretty much the same one pathway everywhere, and it still feels very underdeveloped. Meanwhile, you drive through any suburban area in the Northeast, probably all the United States, and nothing's the same. Everyone hired their own contractor for fences. Everyone has different fences. Everyone, there's just certain things that are required to make it feel like a town, not a village. So first thing I did is I broke down the small pond and the park in the main town square. I realized that I'm using the community area as a walkway and I don't actually have a walkway so we need a walkway. And also tonight I learned that Wisp can spawn right in the middle of town. And then his little spirit things are right in the middle of town. Also there's no sound for some of these clips because this stupid hamster is singing, and honestly, it's ear piercing. First thing I did, I moved the pathway two blocks up so I can have a garden alongside the rocks. The combination of the dark rocks and then the walkway needed some soft nature between these two hard surfaces. So we have so hard surface, and then nice soft flowers, and then hard surface walkway. It makes sense, it flows. Plus, anytime that you've ever gone to the beach, except for very small circumstances, you're not gonna see you know, sidewalk right next to the beach. There's gonna be something in between there, whether that's a boardwalk or it's gonna be wave breakers. Next, I wanted to map out where I wanted to move Nook's Cranny to. That was gonna be the first thing people wanted to visit when they're on my island, and sometimes the only thing, like if I have an amazing deal on turnips one day and I'm selling them for 800 bells, I'm gonna have people coming from the airport to Nook's Cranny and I may want to set up fences, that way that's the only thing people can access. And having it right front and center is going to make that even easier. Next, I wanted to separate Nook's Cranny from the rest of the environment to the right of this. So I built some of my brand new Zen fence. I wanted to put something to the front and left of Nook's Cranny thematically. Something that you would see in front or near a general store if you're walking through a town. And I sometimes just like to go through the Nook ATM for every single item I've ever gotten in the game to find just the right thing. And today I learned if you don't try to hunt down the Wisp Spirits, they'll just float right to you. Like all five of them spawned right around me. And Wisp gifted me a cat tower. Neat. This is my second one. And Kitty Cat isn't friendly enough with me to want a gift yet. I decided for right outside of the Nook's Cranny area, I was going to make a white rocking chair that I customized and a white log bench that I customized so they match. And I figured that these seats can serve as a place for people to wait for people to land from their flights. Like if a, a friend or a loved one is coming and you would be sitting in that chair waiting for them to arrive. Now for the area that Nook's Cranny is in currently, I want to move a villager here. And I want to move the one that I like the most. Unfortunately, Bo's house is all wood. It's just a log cabin. And it's not going to really mesh with, with, the, with the aesthetic. So I'm going to move Paula, my Swedish bear. She is one of my favorites, yeah. And this is going to increase Goose's area for their house as well. And they're a fitness nut, so I want to build sort of a workout area in their yard. Plus, I have a whole bunch of fitness gear. I'm clearly not doing anything with it. God, I hate this thing. Sadly, with the cranny being established where it is currently, this is gonna put a hard halt to what I can actually lay down. But I do get to preserve my rock, which is nice. I have this rock, it's gonna be right in the front yard and I'm gonna be able to go to it every day. I even got the fence all lined up. Then I also decided I want this two wide gap between this house and Nook's Cranny and the Zen fence. I don't know if I'm gonna make it flowers or if I'm gonna make it a walkway or if I'm gonna make it sort of like a side of the house alleyway that trash cans are gonna be in, something like that. And my last bit of work for the island for the night is I removed the fence separating the different flowers because 
honestly, they need room to expand. And I'm brainstorming some ideas, but I'm not too sure exactly what I want to do. But for the night, this will be fine, because if something wants to expand and it wants to expand to where one of the fences is, then boom, good. And time for bed. Good morning, gamers. Welcome back to Animal Crossing. Morning, Isabel. Right now, it's it's 9 a.m. on plays. That's right. There really isn't any news to speak of today. That's all for now. Okay, so she announces it when it's another villager's birthday, but doesn't announce when it's my birthday? Oh. Why is my in-game birthday June 4th? Uh... <laughs> So when they ask you to put in your birthday, I thought it was day-month format. Turns out that it was month-day format, because I'm the 6th of the 4th, and this has me down as the 4th of the 6th. <laughs> so, great! Great, my birthday is gonna be in June! Awesome! Good job, Austin. We have some mail. That's from Bo. Alpha, hope you like your shiny new mountain bike. Oh, thanks, dude. Let me said something else I can't read. Jack, shiny new paper lantern. Thank you. Zoe, DJ plays. <laughs> Thanks, my dude. So you needed bathroom stuff. Enjoy the shiny new shower set. Thank you, Brandon. Hope you have a good day. Thanks, Evray. Aqua, this OG cat is the very first person to greet you in all of the past Animal Crossing games. Hope you have a great day. Oh, well, thank you. Hopefully this is new for you. Thank you, Claw. That concludes our mail. Is this more of the... Oh, what kind of paper lantern is this? This is hot. <laughs> Oh, that's hot. That's hot. Zoe sent me a DJ set. Oh, it actually plays music. That's pretty awesome. Train set. Oh my god, I love it. Does does the train set change with the season? Like right now it has the cherry blossom trees? I think this is coming along nicely. Now, someone told me that the Nooklings are able to buy DIY recipes, and they weren't too sure if that was only if it's an upgraded Nook's Cranny, or if that was part of an update. So let's go check that out. Oh, check it out, we have Sahara today. Sarah, I will come to you, I will buy many a rug from you. Oh, I like this, this is nice. <gasps> that bed, the no most normal looking lamp, a an oil drum. You guys have been holding out on me. Oh yeah, look at that, they can totally buy DIY stuff now. They are not worth a lot. What's your turn up price? 78, that that's not good. Oh, at least it's cheap. If you didn't know, there was already another Animal Crossing New Horizons update. This is going to be, I believe, 1.1.4. The biggest thing of this is there was a glitch if you tried to get a specific statue from Flick for uh, some beetle. I don't know exactly. And also, the biggest thing is the Easter eggs have been nerfed. So now there's going to be much less of them that you're going to get from fishing, possibly less size three fish spawns. There's going to be less everything. Hopefully less balloons. They were way too many of them. Oh, and the wood eggs. Ugh. Way too much of everything. I just reloaded my game and apparently I have new mail. Jack Handy, happy birthday. Hope you get this on the right day. Well, I did. I had this since day one, but I believe it would go great in your arcade, Neon. Thank you, Jack. Happy birthday. Thank you, Alpha. What did the osteopathic medicine doctor bring to the potluck? Spare ribs. Zoe told me I need to immediately read her letter, then immediately put the item down, so. Happy birthday, Austin. Another year closer to the big milestone. Lots of love, Zoe. Is this a tombstone? Did she send me a damn tombstone? Yep. 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 Thanks. Thanks. Damn Australians. Their morbid sense of humor. A diner neon sign. Oh my god. I love this. An extra large backpack. It's red. I mean, it's not huge, but it's red. And I love it. And it's so much better than my current backpack. Thank you. A rock guitar. Oh, I have a pedal board. Now I just need an amp. Anyways, here's Wonderwall. It's really upsetting that I can't hold this. And it's just me touching it. Black 
Blathers, Blathers, it's finally time to move your museum. Let's do it. Is it one deeper than I thought it was? I gotta say, it's the best feeling when you finally do a middle piece and it gets rid of the side corners, too. Yeah. Yeah, that's hot. <laughs> oh, that's hot. That's hot. And then tomorrow, we can finally move this out of the way and then finish up this area. Oh, I ran into this weird... I don't know if it's a bug or if I did something wrong, but some of my fruit trees were not growing. Like, at all. So I had to remove them and put them over here, or this one over here, so that it would grow. It was weird. Yay, more Easter eggs. Hooray. Uh, why does this say sold? Limburg? What is Limburg? I have never met a Limburg. Oh my god. Oh my god. What is this? This is... This is... Ah, uh, this is if David Tell was a mouse in Animal Crossing. I want nothing to do with this. This might be the worst possible villager to move in. <laughs> is that pasta? A food mess. I'm okay. I think my character is portly enough. Good morning, Sable. Welcome back. It's, um, nice of you to keep supporting Able Sisters so we can... Be the best shop we can be. All right, looks like your favorite customer came by again today, Sable. Every day for like a week, it's been, do you think Austin John will stop by today? Maybe she likes me. And I'm all like, sis, confine your spines. We're not even open yet. Mabel? <laughs> Don't worry, sis. Austin John is too nice to ever make fun of you, right, Austin John? So I was talking with uh, Zoe, who's a, a real, real veteran at this game. And she was saying how Abel, Sable, and Label are three orphaned hedgehogs. And they just kind of raised each other and looked up each other. And these photos right here kind of depict that. And it's it's a really sad story. And they're they're just hedgehogs trying to make it in the world. These are ugly outfits, by the way. Can you get better things, please? You see my sense of style? I would like things like this. I want things that that Kanye West would wear. So I still have two hours to go before I get my afternoon prices for my turnips, which I, I don't assume are gonna be amazing, but you know what? You never know. In the meantime, I want to do some things here. Now there's been a chart that's been floating around and I think I might've even featured it in an old video that shows the most effective way to have a five by five grid of every flower type and to crossbreed them. Now what I'm thinking is, uh, it's essentially set up that way every flower's in the best position for it to crossbreed and reproduce. I can use my different floor patterns of the different dirt for me to know which ones I should never pick up because they're the parent flowers and which ones to let continue breeding. Everything is five tall. So one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to need to go all the way up to about this line right here. So that means that I'm going to need to relocate all of my money trees, which is fine because I'm relocating my house as well. So this seems like a good time for voiceover Austin, not live Austin. Thanks live Austin, this is voiceover Austin again. My first step here is I want to relocate my money trees. And I'm gonna be putting them next to my Zen bridge cause I walk that every single day and my house is gonna be located there. So I'm gonna pass my money trees every day. Who doesn't wanna pass their money trees? For my flowers, I am going to be laying out an area that is 20 spaces tall and five spaces wide. And then a gap of two for a path and then another 20 tall five wide. So I did that. I laid out all the non-obtrusive fencing and pathways that I possibly could. Now the part that is very difficult when doing this is you have very limited inventory and 40 spaces doesn't seem like a lot but once you're here and once you're digging up every flower one flower takes up a full inventory space and then on top of that I'm popping balloons left and right because I want 300 balloons pop so I get that golden slingshot so people could stop sending me pictures of did you know that you get a golden slingshot yeah I know I get a golden slingshot I just haven't hit 300 yet 
And for the sake of making my life easier, I decided to lay out all the flower patches identical to this chart. And then I started with putting down dirt patches for all the flowers on the left side. The dirt patches are going to represent everywhere that I am not going to be digging up flowers from. Like those are the permanent flowers. And boom, that's Cosmos done, the first of eight. And I realized that this isn't only going to just work, it's gonna look beautiful. Once I got to the hyacinth, it was a little different since the blue is a crossbred color, and then these crossbred colors have to crossbreed to make a new crossbreed. And I heard a rumor a while back that stuck with me, that only natural blues can crossbreed to make the purples, or whatever the blues make. And I'm pretty sure this has been debunked, I haven't seen it one way or another. I feel like it just comes down to someone saying online, hey, I tried this and it didn't work. So people are like, oh, it can't happen then. Meanwhile, there's just a chance of it happening and it didn't happen for them. Know what I mean? Anyways, I use the lighter dirt on the ground for the crossbreeds that are going to be crossbreeding. That way, even though there's going to be something cool and fun there, I'm not going to be digging them up. And after about two hours later, when it was all laid out, all the section of the flowers are in their beautiful 5x5 five five grid. And I marked out all of the basic flowers that I'm not going to be digging up. It is perfect. This is ready to go. It's just a matter of watering it every day and getting those hybrids. Now here's a little pro tip that a lot of people didn't know. If you're standing in a flower and you want to cover a hole, instead of hitting Y, Yes, I had to look at the controller. You just take out a shovel and hit A. This is gonna make it so you only cover the hole, you don't pick the flower, and this does not reduce the durability of your shovel. Now that's after 12 p.m., time to check my turnip price again. By the way, this morning it was horrible. It was 78, and this afternoon, it's even worse. It's 71. With my flower garden all set for crossbreeding, I decided to put two rows of all the flowers on the left side of here. That way it's just sort of laid out nicely and I have a nice representation of my collection. I also visited some islands from some peeps on my Discord so I could buy all the missing flower seeds that I needed. And when I was visiting someone's island, they had a villager there who uh, apparently is a squirrel mixed with toxicity. And it was crafting and it gave me the DIY for an iron armor. That's pretty sweet. Then I wanted to start messing around with the custom designs on tops of walkways. As long as there's one transparent pixel in your custom design, then it will behave differently than if you were to just lay it on the ground, as opposed to stacking it on walkways. An hour later, I came up with a design that I'm a big fan of right now, and I'm mostly using stone walkways, and I wanted to do something like a cobblestone walkway border, so I ended up with this. It's a simple pattern with a gray line going all the way left to right, and then black right above it, and then on the other side, I put dirt brown with little specks of white, dark white, gray, darker brown, and black. The biggest pain of this entire process was not putting them down, but making 12 designs of various combinations of walkway connections that all work together. Then I spent a little bit of time formatting the rest of the downtown area. Now while I'm doing whatever it is that I'm doing on screen, let me talk to you guys, like some real talk here. Whenever I do a project like the museum Zen Garden or this downtown area or my house and the mountain, it takes so long, like three episodes because it's three real life days for you to finally see what's finished. I want to know in the comment section, would you prefer videos every two or three days so you could see the start to end of one specific project? Or do you like the day-to-day -day grind and seeing a little bit of progress on this, a little bit of progress on this, a little bit of progress on this, just so you can see how much could be done every day? Please let me know in the comment section down below. It's This question's been eating me a lot. Now let's check in with the gameplay, Austin. Just a quick update on our villager mountain here. Now that the final house from the bottom was removed, I was able to continue the stream all the way up. Eventually I'm gonna have a pathway going through here, accessing all the houses and building yards for them. We're gonna be demolishing this bridge tomorrow, and then we're probably gonna be building one much better. And once we head up the villager mountain, I laid down some temporary fencing. Like, I recognize this yard is way too, it's so small that I can't even put a fence there and there because it's considered part of the entranceway, right? So I'm thinking I'm probably going to take this path and of course it's going to go up to the next floor, but I think for down here I'm going to sort of bring it down and around this way. And then this will be considered the front yard and then we could have separate flower gardens lower below. I think that's going to be a really nice touch. Making our way up the mountaintop 
We have Julia's house up here, which we can give her a nice size yard, as well as over here. Is this Bloops? Is this Bloops? Yep, Bertha's house. We have Bertha over here, and we could give her a nice size yard as well. That just leaves the area down here as being somewhat, you know... Eh, I don't, I don't even know. Unnecessary? I could probably make them into smaller gardens. This this isn't even a garden. This is just a fence. <laughs> This is just a safety fence right now. But yeah, that is what I plan on doing either later today, tomorrow, or the next day, because now that we have all the staircases here, we can actually really terraform this place. I'm so not looking forward to David Tell moving in here. He's so loud and annoying. But guys, I'm wrapping up this video, guys. Do me a favor. If you haven't done so, hit the like button down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, words. Austin John out.